Hello and welcome. So in this video we are going to build our own finance database containing stock prices and other stock information using Python and SQL. I recommend to watch my videos on Python and SQL beforehand so that you can better follow along. What I already did here is to import some necessary libraries. We need SQL Alchemy, Pandas and Wild Finance, but you could also work with another financial data provider such as Quandl. What I also did here is to create two lists containing the ticker symbols for a particular stock market index. I'm just taking two examples here, the Indian stock market index, Sensex, and the Dow Jones. So let's take a quick look at how a list uh, is looking like. So here we are getting the ticker symbols for the Sensex, and here we are getting that for the Dow Jones, right? So the very first step now is to get the data from the financial data provider. And I'm using a function to achieve that. So let's just call that get data. This function is taking the list of ticker symbols as the argument. And inside this function, I'm populating a list. So I'm creating an empty list first. And I'm looping over the ticker symbol lists here. So I'm just using for ticker in tickers. And now I'm appending the financial data from the financial data provider to this list here. And therefore I'm just using yf.download and provide the ticker, which is the element in this iteration. So every single um, stock ticker from this list or this list here. And what I'm doing also is to reset the index of this data frame. So why am I doing this? Because when you are pulling the data from Yahoo Finance, so you might know that because you have watched another video on my channel, you are getting a data frame with the date as the index of this data frame. But I want to get the date as a column. So this is why I'm resetting the index here. Okay, so after I've populated this list, I want to return it. So let's execute that and yeah, use this function. So we are creating two variables here. I'm just taking India for the Sensex and US for the Dow Jones. And now I'm just using the get data function, call it and provide the Sensex tickers as the argument. And for the US, I'm doing the same. So I'm just providing the Dow Jones tickers here. Okay, so let's execute that. And now this is taking some time as we're downloading the data. So let's go through that waiting time together. And depending on how much data you are pulling, so if you are taking the S&P 500 here, this is taking even longer. But if you are storing the data in the database, you don't need to wait uh, for this anymore. So this is the point of this video, that we have our own database and are not dependent on online requests, right? And the online request, by the way, is limited. So I think this is very helpful for you. Maybe I'm wrong with that, so be kind of ready to provide me feedback. Okay, so I think this is finished. Yes, it is. So let's take a look at what we are getting for India. And now you see we are getting a list containing the known data frames, right? And a data frame, so let's just take the very first element of this list. A data frame is looking like this. We have a date column, open, high, low, close, adjusted close, and a volume column, right? So this is how the elements in these lists look like. So if we are taking a look at India again, we are getting a bunch of data frames stored in the list here, right? And yeah, same for the US, of course. So we can take a look at that if you would like. Now we're getting for every stock uh, ticker, we are getting a data frame like this. So we are getting 30 data frames here, right? So same for India, by the way. Now, what is the next step? The next step is we want to store all those in a database, right? So Therefore, I'm creating an engine here and I'm creating a function for that. But this function makes only sense for SQLite databases. This is the database system we are working with. 
If you're working with MySQL or, for example, Microsoft uh, SQL Server or Postgres or whatsoever, you have to create a schema for every single equity index, right? So you have to create a schema for India, you have to create a schema for USA and so on. But SQLite is working a bit different. For a SQLite database, we are just creating a new database for the country we are interested in, right? And this is why I'm using a new function here, create in engine. And I'm just providing a name here, which I can define for myself. And inside this function, I'm creating a variable, which I'm calling engine, use uh, SQL Alchemy and create the engine. Now I'm providing SQLite here and add the name to this. And this is creating a database with the name I'm providing to this function. Nothing more than that. And I'm returning the engine after that. So let's execute that. And now we want to create two engines. We want to have an Indian engine and a US engine for the Dow Jones. You can also call that Dow engine, but I'm just taking a simple example here. So you have to make your own amendments for your requirements, right? So I'm taking India engine and US engine here. And with that, I'm just calling this function. So I'm creating an engine and provide the name of the database. So I'm just calling that India here. And I'm also creating an engine for the US and I'm just calling that USA here, right? Okay, so now I have two different database engines here, right? And next, I wanna store those data frames, which we just observed, into those databases. So I want to store the Sensex um, data frames in the India database, and I want to store the DAO um, data frames in the US database. So let's create a function to achieve that, and I'm just calling that to SQL. And this function is taking three arguments. The first one is the list containing the data frames. So I'm just calling that frames. The second one is the ticker symbol list. So I'm just calling that symbols. And the third one is the engine. Now inside this function, I'm defining a loop. And this loop is, I'm just writing it down first. So this is for frame symbol in zip frames symbols. So what is this loop doing? This is iterating over both the list containing the data frames with date, open, high, low, and so on, but also over the symbols. So to be more specific here, if I'm taking the US list here, so this would be frames. The first one is the data frame. So this one here, this is the first iteration, the data frame for the very first ticker symbol. And the very first ticker symbol was uh, 3M, right? So I'm just looping over both, okay? Okay, what do we want to do with that? I want to store the data frame into the SQL database. So I'm using frame to SQL. And again, the frame is the first element in this iteration containing the data frame. Right now, I want to define the name of the table, and the name of the table should be the symbol, this one here. So I'm using symbol here, and I also have to provide the engine. So I'm just taking the engine here, and I want to set the index to false as I have no index, and I want to have the date as a column, and I've achieved that beforehand, right. Okay, and that's already it. So what I'm also doing is I'm just giving me feedback here, successfully imported data or whatsoever. So this is the function which is importing our data frames into a SQL database. And yeah, it's just transforming everything to SQL. So if we are calling this function to SQL, we are providing the India list containing the 30 data frames and also the symbols list. This is tickers for Sensex. And also the 
India engine, right? We have defined that here. And if I'm executing the function now, I'm getting a database containing all stock prices for all Sensex tickers. So I can easily access them every time I want and I don't even need an internet connection for that. So let's execute that. And we have successfully imported the data and we are doing the same for, for the US. So we are providing US tickers DAO and the US engine. So let's execute that. And we have imported the data. Okay, now let's take a look at the mess we have created. I'm just kidding. So I already opened the USA database here and you see we have 30 tables now. And if we're taking a look at that, we are getting all the stocks uh, for the Dow Jones industry average, right? So if we are browsing the data, we can pick a certain table. So as you see, the table names are the ticker symbols. So this is the data for IBM, Cisco, and so on. So you can take a look for yourself, right? Now let's play a bit around what we got here. So let's read out the data. So maybe you wanna, I don't know, add technical indicators to the data or just read it out. So I'm covering that as well in this video. So if I want to access the databases, I'm using pd.readsql and let's just get the data for Apple. So I'm providing the uh, ticker symbol name here and I'm using the US engine here. So let's execute that. And with that, we are getting the data frame for Apple. And we can do some manipulations right now at the moving average. By the way, you could also store the technical indicators in the database. So I don't know about your preferences. So what else can we do just to give you some ideas? We could also use some SQL queries here, select stuff from Apple. I don't know where. Let's pick the winning dates where the close is uh, higher than the open, then we're getting the winning dates and so on and so forth, right? Where date is, I don't know. I, you can play a bit around you for yourself. Just a quick remark to save you some pain. If you're working with table names with a dot in it, you have to be a bit careful. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we are taking a look at the Indian database, so I'm just providing the India engine here and we would take select star from, let's just take Asian paint dot bo is the table name. So why? Because tickers, sensex, you see that they are looking like this, right? So the table name is Asian paint dot bo. So if I would execute this, I will get an error. You see, and that is because the dot has a meaning in the SQL syntax. So to correctly pick that, you have to wrap that in a string here. And then you will see that this is working. So yeah, keep an eye on that. Yeah, and that's already it. So yeah, in case you have any questions, be kind invited to drop me a comment. If this was helpful for you or you are getting some added value out of that, be kind invited to subscribe to the channel or like the video. Thank you very much for watching and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. See you next time. Bye bye.